Hi, my name is Sarah Cogley, and I am the Digital Collections and Repositories Librarian at the University of Buffalo State University of New York. This presentation is about the project that I developed for the Implementing Digital Curation in the Workplace course. I'd like to begin by sharing some historical background on the Love Canal, and then I'm going to talk about the project goals, my process, and give you a tour of the project itself. The information I'm about to share is from the exhibit Love Canal at 25, created by Fred Stoss and Carol Ann Fabian in August 1998. Love Canal is probably the country's most notorious and infamous hazardous waste site. The Love Canal neighborhood is in the southeast section of the LaSalle area of Niagara Falls, New York. William T. Love, an 1890s visionary and entrepreneur, sought to develop a planned industrial community, Model City, in the area. Waters from the Niagara River were to be routed around Niagara Falls to produce cheap hydroelectric power. Model City never happened, but work on the canal to transport waters from the Niagara River did. In 1942, Hooker Chemicals and Plastics Corporation purchased the site of the Love Canal. Between 1942 and 1953, Hooker Chemical disposed of about 22,000 tons of mixed chemical wastes into the Love Canal. Shortly after Hooker ceased use of the site, the land was sold to the Niagara Falls School Board for a price of $1. Hooker Chemical wrote into the deed a disclaimer of responsibility for future damages due to the presence of buried chemicals. In 1955, the 99th Street Elementary School was constructed on the Love Canal property and opened its doors to students. Subsequent development of the area would see hundreds of families take up residence in the suburban blue collar neighborhood of the Love Canal. Unusually heavy rain and snowfall in 1975 and 1976 provided high groundwater levels in the Love Canal area. Portions of the Hooker landfill subsided, 55 gallon drums surfaced, ponds and other surface water area became contaminated, Basements began to ooze an oily residue and noxious chemical odors permeated the area. Physical evidence of chemical corrosion of sump pumps and infiltration of basement cinder block walls was apparent. Subsequent studies by the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry would reveal a laundry list of 421 chemical records for air, water, and soil samples in and around the Love Canal area. In April of 1978, the New York Department of Health Commissioner Robert Whalen declared the Love Canal area a threat to human health and ordered the fencing of the area near the actual old landfill site. In August, the health commissioner declared a health emergency at the Love Canal, closed the school, and recommended temporary evacuation of pregnant women and young children from the first two rings of houses around the site. Within a week, Governor Hugh Carey announced the intended purchase of all Ring 1 houses later expanded to 238 houses in rings one and two. President Jimmy Carter simultaneously announced the allocation of federal funds and ordered the Federal Disaster Assistance Agency to assist the, to assist the city of Niagara Falls to remedy the Love Canal site. Amid this setting, individuals, most notably Lois Gibbs, Dr. Beverly Pagan, and Sister Marjean Hoffman, and local neighborhood, and community groups such as the local canal home, Love Canal Homeowner, Homeowners Association and the Ecumenical Task Force of the Niagara Frontier became concerned about the situation. Their primary concern was the actual extent of the chemical contamination and its impact on the health of Love Canal residents. Second, and perhaps more important, was the lack of readily available information to explain the science. The levels of uncertainty political and corporate agendas, manipulation of the media, in general, an overall void of reliable information that would answer the simple question, is it safe to live in Love Canal? Among the thousands of boxes of records that document the history of the University of Buffalo, the University Archives collects manuscripts, photographs, and documentation of significant events, organizations, and topics that have shaped the communities, landscapes, and peoples of Western New York. The Love Canal environmental disaster is one of those subjects. 
1977, Penelope Plowman was a member of the University at Buffalo's Sociology Department and Dr. Adeline Levine's Love Canal Research Group. Building on her work as part of the group, Plowman wrote her dissertation on the news coverage of Love Canal. She undertook extensive research, conducted numerous interviews, and took hundreds of photographs of the Love Canal neighborhood, its residents, homes, the 99th Street Elementary School, the Love Canal Homeowners Association office, and demolition and remediation work at the Love Canal site. Dr. Plowman donated the Penelope Plowman Love Canal collection to the University Archives in February 2008. Also in 2008, a portion of the slides from the Plowman Love Canal collection were digitized for inclusion in the Love Canal digital image collection. So enter my project. My research question was, how can digital tools be used to connect researchers to archival resources from different collections? How can digital tools be used to improve the discoverability of connections between archival collections and enhance description of these resources? The 45th anniversary of the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency's Superfund program is in 2025. To mark this, the University Archives is partnering with other regional institutions to create programming, exhibitions, and events. My project focuses on bringing together resources from disparate archival Love Canal collections so that researchers may discover information in a new context. I wanted to focus on archival photographs, historical and contemporary print and digital maps, and descriptive data pulled from the Love Canal archives. In this project, I will bring together maps and images in a digital space, placing the photographs in a virtual geographic environment. I envision a space where researchers can navigate through the maps and view images according to the location at which the photographs were taken, also having access to existing and enhanced metadata about the images. The scope of the project was narrowed as I explored the tools that are available, the extent of our archival collections, and the time frame uh, for the completion of the course. I made the decision to specifically focus on the historical photographs and contemporary digital maps. Historical maps and aerial photographs will be incorporated later, and I'll talk more about this at the end of the presentation. The deliverables of this project are an ArcGIS story map. The map will be created using ArcGIS layers of Love Canal neighborhood parcels, the Love Canal emergency declaration area, and the Love Canal containment area outline. I'll overlay the historical images onto the map according to the location at which the images were taken using street addresses. Researchers can select the images or map locations and explore information, descriptive metadata, about the photographs, including the address, names of subjects, date of photography, photographer name, image identifier, copyright information, and a link to the Love Canal images hosted by the UB Library's digital collections. Researchers may zoom out of the map to see the Love Canal neighborhood in its broader geographic location. Just to give you a bird's eye view of my process, um, my first step was to refine the scope of the project with the university archivists. I wanted to ensure that my project goals aligned with the mission of the archives and that it would enrich the researcher experience. I then researched tools that were available through the university I selected photographs from the digital collection. I did some experimentation with tools, and then I undertook metadata cleanup and enhancement. My next step was then to refine um, the ArcGIS map layers and story map design to complete a draft and share that with my coworkers to get their feedback. Um, and then uh, finally to produce this presentation. I'm going to talk about each of these steps a little bit more in depth as I walk you through the story map. I focused first on tools that were already supported and or in use at the university. I looked at Omeka Classic and Omeka S, and I spoke with the library's GIS librarian who recommended ArcGIS. UB has an ArcGIS online educational instance, and I was able to access training on that tool and with story maps through the university's account. I'm now gonna skip to the story map, and from there I'll discuss some of the other tools that I used. I'll now take you out of this presentation and into the story map to give you uh, 
a tour of the story map, talk a bit more about my process uh, and the tools that I used in its design. So here we have the Love Canal story map. I've organized the story map page into five different sections. The first is an introduction. This is an introduction to the project um, and also to the archival collections in the UB archives. I also created a section for historical background about Love Canal, much of which I've shared with you earlier in this presentation. The next section is the map itself that includes the digitized historical images. And then I also created a section um, for additional resources. These are links to research guides, timelines, finding aids for archival collections, digitized photographs, um, searchable newspaper clippings, and other things that are accessible through the UB Archives website. And then lastly, I created a section for project information. This is just some background information on the course um, and also the vision for the project. Uh, and a list of the tools that I used and a section on um, ideas for future development. And I'll talk about that at the very end of the presentation. But let's go up to the story map. I started with a parcel map, which you can see here indicated by the yellow lines on this map. And then I added layers. Um, the first layer that I added is the Love Canal, Love Canal containment area, which is uh, here, um, this kind of rectangle shape in red. And then I also included a layer on the map of the Love Canal emergency declaration area, which is the section um, that you can see highlighted in green. I thought it was important to include these layers because it provides the viewer with a visual boundary as defined by the government um, of the impacted areas of the Love Canal environmental disaster. You can also see that users are able to zoom in and zoom out to see where the Love Canal neighborhood is in relationship to um, other places in Western New York and Canada. The digitized historical images featured on the map are currently part of a digital collection hosted on Omeka Classic, which is the library's digital collections platform. I had initially hoped to use the image descriptions in digital collections. However, when I began reviewing the metadata, I realized that some of it was incorrect, especially the street names. Often 97th Street and 99th Street were, were mixed up. Also, some of the language needed to be remediated. For example, the homes that are described in the images are often described as being abandoned, when in fact, many families were forced to evacuate. Some had chosen to leave the neighborhood before the evacuation was mandatory. I decided to remove the term abandoned and simply describe the homes according to their street addresses. So far, I've only made that change um, in the story map, but part of uh, the future steps of this project are to go back into digital collections and do the remediation of the metadata there as well. The user clicks on one of these images. They'll be brought to a larger version of that image. And also on the map, this pin will change to a darker blue. The metadata that I chose to include um, includes the address of the house, a description of the image, or an address, I should say, of the location that the image was taken. These aren't always images of homes. The names of the photographer, the identifier of the photograph, and then also a link back to the Love Canal um, digital collection that contains all of these images and many, many more. Users can also click on the images um, to expand them. It's possible for people to navigate through these images just by scrolling down this list on the left. And it takes viewers in roughly a, a clockwise direction around the Love Canal area. But people can also just scroll through the map, move it around. If they're interested in a specific parcel, they know a street address that they'd like to see a photo of, 
they can navigate that way as well. House numbers were visible in many of the historical images, so those were easy to locate on the parcel map. For those images without obvious indications of location, I used contextual information, such as known buildings or geographical features in the background. So for example, the clay cap of the containment area is behind these houses. Um, so I know that this is 97th Street and that we are looking east. I even had to compare the color of the houses, their roof lines and their window locations to those shown in aerial photographs from that period that are in our archival collections. If I was unsure of the location, I consulted Penelope Plowman, the photographer of these photos, who has an amazing memory. And if we still couldn't locate that image, I simply chose to leave it off this map. In addition to the many, many homes of these residents, Penelope Plowman also took pictures like this one, which are the backyards of some of these homes on 97th Street. And you can see um, from the extensive rainfall that there's been a lot of flooding in their backyards. The fences here abut the Love Canal um, and many of the barrels that rose to the top um, came up in people's backyards. There are also images that Penelope took of the remediation work happening. Um, so this is the installment of the clay cap over the Love Canal. And Penelope also took a lot of images of the 99th Street Elementary School. This is an image of the playground after the neighborhood had been evacuated. Fencing was put up around the playground and around the entire uh, neighborhood. And Penelope also took pictures um, inside the elementary school. Once uh, the elementary school was closed, uh, it became the location for the Love Canal Homeowners Association, which was a community activist organization. Here's an image of a security guard um, inside the building. A bulletin board that belonged to the Love Canal Homeowners Association. She took a lot of images of posters that were um, hung up around the neighborhood and also were used uh, during protests and um, community meetings um, and other events like that. The Love Canal Homeowners Association was incredibly important in getting um, both local regional and national attention um, to the environmental disaster. Uh, the woman here in the center is Lois Gibbs. She was essentially the uh, leader of the Love Canal Homeowners Association. Um, and she went on to do a lot of um, work in environmental activism um, around the country. Penelope Plowman um, often uh, snuck in illegally to this area after it had been fenced off to take these images. Um, she revisited the Love Canal numerous times when she was a PhD student. Um, and then after she has visited numerous times, in fact, she was just in the area um, a couple weeks ago and visited to take pictures. Um, and she's going to donate those images to the university archives as well. I wanted to mention that there are images in this collection, um, not only of homes that were owned by the residents who lived in them, but also of a neighborhood um, next to Love Canal 
that uh, was primarily um, apartments that people rented in. And the renters had their own um, association. Uh, but, but I thought that it was important um, to also include pictures um, of their part of the community as well. So these are the apartments and then these are the homes. One of the challenges that I encountered in this project um, is that not all of the parcel numbers have stayed the same. Um, so for example, let me get you to the right photo. So this is a picture of 9905 Colvin Boulevard, and this was the Love Canal Homeowners Association office after the 99th Street School um, was evacuated. Uh, they moved to this um, single family residence at this address. And you can clearly see the number, sorry, let me zoom back in here. It says 9905. Um, and that was also Penelope Plowen's um, recollection of where the location of the homeowners association was, but I just could not find that address on this map. So I had to go back to some of the historical maps that we have in the university archives. And sure enough, um, this lot 799 uh, had been renumbered and um, divided in a different way than it was in the late 1970s. Um, so we know that that is in fact the location here of uh, the Love Canal Homeowners Association, even though that parcel is no longer on this contemporary digital map. So the metadata cleanup was primarily a task that I did in Microsoft Excel. Um, and I also used Excel for tracking um, the images as I uploaded them into story maps. Um, I had to do some resizing of the images. Uh, the, the ones that had been loaded into Omeka Classic for the digital collection, I believe, were primarily JPEG 2000, and that is not a format that, that is supported by StoryMap. Um, so I used Irfan View to do a batch um, file migration to JPEGs at a lower resolution uh, so that they would meet the requirements of the StoryMap application. Um, and I also used Adobe Bridge and Adobe Photoshop when I needed to really zoom in on images to look uh, for details to help me uh, locate the location of them. One of my steps in the process was to get feedback from the university archivist and also our reference archivist. Those are the two people who handle um, most of the requests for information um, about Love Canal and about our collections. They were really pleased with this project because they felt like it brought together um, these images, which are in one collection, um, with data, particularly the, the parcel um, numbers in maps. And they're gonna allow researchers to find these photographs, to discover these photographs in a new way um, and to really place the photographs into a context um, that is new uh, and that hopefully also will uh, be of interest to um, new groups of people as well. So I'm going to leave the story map for now, and um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to jump back into the presentation uh, to talk about future opportunities for this story map and related projects. So I believe that there are a lot of future opportunities to um, expand this project. I definitely want to look into layering historical aerial photographs onto the map and doing additional media remediation in the digital collections. I also want to explore tools like Abbey Fine Reader to OCR newspaper clippings and extract that data and potentially incorporate anonymized data from Love Canal resident interviews. Lastly, it's going to be important to partner with university archives and other regional cultural and community organizations on upcoming program over the next few years. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.